Okay, so welcome back. We are going over um, 4.3 in Math 2. Um, this is called absolutely value, which is about the absolute value function. So relate piecewise functions to absolute value. So if you remember what a piecewise function is, it's just a function that's made up of a bunch of pieces, right? Think Lego pieces or whatever pieces that you think about. Um, absolute value was the fun. It's, it's the it's those two bars, you'll see them in a little bit, but um, you should know that absolute value just means distance from zero. How far is this number from zero? That's really what they're asking. Um, you're gonna be able to identify features of an absolute value function. What is the effect of taking the absolute value of a linear function? Sounds funny, right? Because if you take the absolute value of a number, it gives you a positive number, right? Um, or zero, depending. And what happens, can you really take the absolute value of a linear function, Ms. Johnson? Can you do that? And the answer is yes. And so, but what they want to know what happens, right? So how can we think of absolute value as a function? Okay, so here's what you guys were doing. It says, Michelle likes riding her bike to and from her favorite lake on Wednesdays. She created the following graph to represent the distance she is away from the lake while biking. So here she starts far away from the lake. And then she's riding towards the lake, towards the lake, towards the lake here. What happens here? What happens at that, that point right there? What would you call that point? Anybody want to call, name this point? What would you call him? Yeah, someone said the vertex. Awesome. I've never called, you guys have never seen this function before, but yet you made sense of it. Absolutely. We would call this the vertex the same way that we call it the vertex in a parabola function, because it's the point where it goes from decreasing to increasing, right? Yeah. Someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, it decreases. Yes. Someone said, hey, Ms. Johnson, it stops. Exactly. So she, this is when she stops. Why? Why did she stop here? What happened in the context? What happened right here? So Michelle's riding her bike and she gets here. What's this point right here? Why is she there? This is when she gets to the lake, right? Does that make sense? Yes, exactly. Thank you. This is it when she gets to the lake. Exactly. So then what happens? She goes back home. That No, notice she doesn't even stay at the lake. She literally like, I don't know if you guys ever did a race where you have to touch the wall. She literally touches the lake and starts driving, you know, driving, riding away. Okay. So this, that's exactly what happens here. Okay. So you guys gave me some really good observations. Um, I read them, but for now, I'm just going to go with, she's riding towards the lake. She gets to the lake. She doesn't even like pause, take a breath, take a breather. Notice no time passes while she's just stopped at the lake. So she literally rides. Um, next to the lake. And then she almost like turns around and drives away from the lake or rides away. So then it says, write a piecewise function for this situation with the linear, with, with each linear function being a point slope form using the point three comma zero. What do you notice? Okay. So they said point slope form. Do you guys remember point slope form? If you don't, no big deal. I'm going to write it for you. Okay, here is your point slope form. There's a couple different versions of it. I like this one because of how I've taught you how to um, transform functions. So I go with uh, y equals m parentheses x minus x1 plus y1. Okay, so here's my function. It's a piecewise function. I mean, not a piecewise. It's my point slope function where here's the point x1, y1. And here's my slope. So the only things that I need to use to build this equation are those two pieces, my slope and my point, hence point slope form. Okay. So it's almost like when you're making a quesadilla, right? If you want to make a quesadilla, there's only a couple of ingredients that you actually need. You need a tortilla, you need cheese, maybe a little butter and a pan and a heating source. There you go. You got a quesadilla. Okay. So, um, if you, if you want to build a quesadilla, you need those ingredients. If you want to build a point slope form of any of the equation of a line, all you need is the point, which they gave you three comma zero, 
and the slope. Shoot, they didn't give me the slope. And you're like, no problem, Ms. Johnson. We can grab our slope from here. So can you grab this slope? What is the slope of this line here? What is the slope of this line here? Okay, if in case you forgot how to find the slope, okay, slope is rise over run, right? So when we write rise over run, I usually start with the lower point. So I'm gonna start here and I rise and I try to find another good point. So here's a good point, here's a good point, and then here's a good point. Um, I'm just gonna use this closest point. So I go up two and I go left one. Left means negative one. So therefore my slope is two divided by negative one, which is just negative two. Is everybody okay with negative? Yeah, negative two, very good. Negative two is my slope. Yes, if you forget, that your slope is negative, no big deal. Just make sure that you put it in there and you use the calculator to check it. So there I go, I have two um, pieces of my equation that I can build it with. So I am going to build it. So I'm gonna write over here that I found out that M equals negative two. My point is three comma zero. So I'm just gonna plug everything in, okay? So here's my equation. I go y equals, I'm gonna put the m right there, x minus and plus. So I'm gonna, this is the form, and I'm gonna drop the slope into where the slope goes, the x where the x goes, and the zero where the y goes, right? I think I said that wrong. The three where the x goes and the zero where the y goes. Okay, so my slope is negative two, that makes sense, right? Oh, good question. Good question. Give me a second and I'll answer that. So um, I'm going to pop the slope in where the slope goes. M is M, so negative two, put it there. This is my X one, so I'm going to put it right there. Miss Johnson, should I have put a three here or a plus three? Because that three is a three. Yeah, but that minus is that minus. And then I'm going to put a zero here and then I'm done. So there's my point. This is one equation. This is the this is the one on the left side where she's going towards the lake. Right? Towards the lake. Now I have to find the other one. So I'm just going to let you guys practice finding the point and the slope for this other side. In the meantime, one of your classmates said, hey, Ms. Johnson, whenever I'm finding slope, do I have to use the vertex? The answer is no, but you have to use two good points. So if you look here, this is a good point because it crosses it at a corner corner. That's what I call it, corner corner. It's at a corner, right? This is a good point. This point right here is not a good point because I can't give you the exact location of it, okay? So right now I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna have you guys find this um, equation of this line right here, okay? All right, so the second line you should have been able to find, you, sh you are now looking for the equation, um, the second equation, this guy here. Okay, all you're supposed to do is number one, find the slope and number two, they already gave you the point and there's the formula. All you had to do is find, literally just find the slope. So how do you find the slope? We already talked about it. We've, we go rise over run. So the rise number is the same, it's two. And then instead of running to the left one, um, a lot of you notice we're moving to the right one. So here my slope is gonna be two divided by one, which is just two. So in reality, it's gonna be the same exact equation, except for it's not negative two, it's positive, right? So plugging it in would look exactly the same. So y equals to two parentheses, x minus three plus zero. Those are your two equations of the line, right? So then you would check your answer. Hopefully you guys are checking your answer. Um, you put negative two parentheses, x um, minus three. And then um, the next one was positive two parentheses x minus three. And if you look at this, right, that's exactly that picture. And you're like, yes, sweet, I did it, right? 
So you were able to do it. So what's something that you notice? You guys notice what? <clears throat> Someone says, should there always be a negative sign in the parentheses? Yes, the form calls for it. Someone asked Ms. Johnson, should there always be a minus sign here? Not in this one necessarily, but definitely in this one, because this is the form, right? Because if you plug it, if you, if your X value is a negative, say like negative two, X minus negative two, then it would be plus two, right? So that's huge. So someone says, hey, Ms. Johnson, I notice there's a negative and a positive slope and they're like opposites of each other. Yeah, I noticed that too. Anything else that you notice? What else do you notice? What else do you notice? Yeah, someone else says, hey, Ms. Johnson, I notice X minus three and X minus three are exactly the same. Exactly, perfect. Um, the last one that we said, this particular piecewise function is called a linear function. What are the sum of the characteristics of a linear absolute value function that you see in this graph? So you guys already mentioned some. One of them is that it has a vertex, right? Another one is it's made up of two pieces two pieces, right? So there's a bunch of um, that we're going to go through. So we're just going to continue. It says, in this part of the test, you will solidify your understanding of a piecewise function and re reason about absolute value functions. So it says, let f of x equal x and g of x equal the absolute value of f of x. What? So just pretend f of x is x and g of x is the absolute value of that number, okay? So it, just think this is the absolute value of this number, right? So I would annotate like this something. So where this equals to the absolute value of f of x. And this is just x. So the first one is going to be like, wait, what? Okay, so if x is negative 4, what's f of x? If X is negative four, what's F of X? If X is negative four, what's F of X? It just says it's X. So what do I write here, folks? Yeah, negative four, perfect. Ms. Johnson, really, that's it? Yeah, that's exactly what this says. F of X is just X. So what's F of negative four? three. What's F of negative three? Yes, negative three. Anybody see the pattern? Can you fill all this in? Can you fill all this in? And then we'll take, well, I'll show you the next part. All right, so you guys knew to plug this in. So this would just be negative two. Um, I'm going down. Negative one, zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. This one says g of x equals to the absolute value of f of x. Some people told me that this answer was four. Where did they get the four from? Where did they get the four from? Yeah. So the absolute value of negative four is four. Why, Ms. Johnson? Because absolute value just means how far is four from zero or negative four, sorry. Negative four, how far is negative four from zero? Yeah, it's not necessarily the opposite because the absolute value of four, how far is four from zero? And you're like four. So these are not opposites. Okay, so I'll tell you right now, this one's four. All right, so fill this in. Fill this in. Very good. All right, let's go. What is this? Three? Oh, because the absolute value of how far is negative three from zero? And you're like three. And then you guys are all good with this, right? Oops. Good. Any questions on this? 
Okay, then it says, explain how g of x affects the output values of f of x. What happened from here to here? What happened from here to here? Yeah, yeah, it just talked about distance. Distance is always positive, right? I can't say to like, hey, hey Nathan, can you run us negative 200 yards to go get us donuts? Can you run negative 200 yards? Um, there is something that's called displacement, which would be negative because it's now showing direction. So kind of like driving east versus driving west, but that's not, the distance is not negative. N distance can't be negative. Can you go into Home Depot and be like, hey bro, can you get me like negative four yards of fence, please? They would look at you like, what? Negative four yards of, you want four yards of fence? No, man, negative. No, you wouldn't say that. Okay, moving on. Um, so graph on the same axis, um, same side of axes, using a different colored pencil, graph g of x and um, graph g of x and f of x. Okay, so we already know g f of x. Hold on, let's clear this. Earlier, you guys told me f of x was just x. Everybody good on that? But g of x right? G of X is the absolute value of X, right? So it, it's part of it here, but this part down here, what happened to the table when we went to the left and it was negative? What were the answers? Okay. Yeah, it went positive. Very good. So if I can take this and bend it up, right? That's what that would look like. So it would look something like, I don't know, sorry. Oh, I can use the pencil tool. Hold on. Let's use the pencil tool. I mean, the line tool. So it would look like this. This is G of X. Something like this. Um, but it should only go to four and it should only be... um you know, uh, what is it called, right, to four or whatever. And then f of x would look like this, right? Uh, that's what it would look like, right? So here's the g of x, oops, here's the g of x, and here's f of x, okay? So you all should get used to this picture. Whenever you see this picture, you should be like, dang, that's an absolute value. Okay, let's move on. Um, let's go here. So wait, I just want to go here because it's too small. It says, um, we did that, we did that. Explain the difference in the graphs between f of x and g of x. What happened between f of x and g of x? Let's look here at our this. Right? What's the difference between G of X, the blue, and F of X, the red? Yeah, you guys said it before. They're always, G of X is always going to be positive, right? This part's the same, right? I've said this like four times today in all my classes. You know that um, game that you guys used to play in those highlight music uh, magazines, right? And it was like same different, like spot the difference, right? So here, the G of X looks like this, F of X looks like this. What's the same? This side, what's different? The down part here is now up here, right? Does that make sense? So use the graph to write a piecewise function for G of X. Explain your process for creating this. Okay, so this is the part that I really want to make sure that we get. How do I write the blue part here? How am I going to write the blue part from here to here, here, on here? So what you should be thinking about is how you did um, slide four. 
So what were those similarities that you all talked about here? Right? What do you notice? What did you guys say? And then that's going to help you do this one. Use the graph to write a piecewise function. So here, how do I write the second piece? How do I write this part right here? So there's the red part from there to there. I got that. Yay. How do I get this blue part right here? Boom. No, look at look at what you guys said over here. What did you guys say over here? Um, you guys said, what did you notice? What did you guys say you noticed over here? You guys are doing good. You're answering questions. Keep fighting. Don't give up. Don't, don't be like, oh, I... The thing that I have to share is, it, is I don't need to say it. What do you notice here? Come on. You notice nothing now. Yes, the opposites. Opposite what? What are the opposites? Very good. What are the opposites? Don't give up. Please, please don't give up right now. Keep engaging. Come on, y'all. What is the opposite? Yeah, but what did we call this number? That You guys said the two and the negative two, but what did you guys call this number? What is this number called? It's the what? Yeah, the slope. So the slopes are opposite. That's what you guys said here. Do you remember that? Everyone put that in the chat right now. The slopes are opposite. Four people did it. I can be amazingly, amazingly stubborn. After years of teaching, this is what you all have taught me. To be stubborn until you do what I ask you to do. I know, it's mean. But if I don't get you to type that out, it's not going to go in your head. So the slopes are opposite. Thank you, six people who did it. The rest of you, what are you doing? What are you doing? The slopes are opposite. So what's the slope for this guy right here? What number is in front of X right there? He's standing right there. Right there. What is it? Okay, so we stopped, we paused at here. What is the, so we, we were talking about how, like the similarities between this that you guys all said were that the slopes were opposite, okay? So that's where we paused. And then we got over here and I said, okay, well, what is my, wait, where am I here? What is my slope for this, for this guy right here? What's the slope, the, the number right in front of here, what's the slope? Yeah, it's one, good job. So you said that the other slope for this guy is gonna be the opposite. So what do I type here? What do I type here? Yeah, negative X. Ms. Johnson, where'd they get negative X from? You guys are the ones who said that. You all said, that the slopes of this guy were opposites, right? Negative two, positive two, negative two, positive two, negative two, positive two. So some of the times that when you guys are answering questions, if you really take a step back and look at what are the similarities and differences, it's gonna help you in a future problem. So that problem actually is gonna help you do this one. Okay, fine. So we have positive X and negative X. Okay, so there I did it. Then the next question says, use the graph to write a piecewise function. So we're pretty much done here, except for we just need our, um, what we call our, 
our um our to and our from right our to and our from so when do you want to start this i wanted to change this guy to red oh man how do i change my colors can you still let me change my colors okay darker red when does the darker red start it starts here right goes here so where does it start and where do you want me to go to Oh, okay, I'll try. Oh, I don't think it does. Let's see. Yeah, it's still red. For some reason, they're both red right now. But for this one up here, where does this one start? Where does this one start? Where does it go from and to? That's what you need to tell me. Yeah, it starts at zero. So I'm going to put zero here. And then I'm going to put less than or equal to X, right? And then we stopped at four, right? We stopped at four because that's where the table told us to stop, but we can actually make it go on forever. So now here, if you notice, it just literally goes on forever and it's it starts at zero. See how this part disappeared? Okay, so now I need you to do this part. You do the left side. Where would you start? Where would you stop? Yeah, it stops at zero. So instead of saying um, zero is less than or equal to X, you could say something like negative infinity, oops, X, or this guy, negative infinity is um, less than or equal to X, right? But then we need it to stop at zero. So then I would go less than or equal to zero. Does that make sense? Ms. Shelton, do I really need to do that? No, but I, this is how my brain thinks. My brain goes from negative infinity and it stops at zero. This one is zero. And then this is to infinity. And you could write to infinity here if you want, less than or equal to zero. But do you see how we made that function? We made it building to... Um, two functions, right? So this is one function made up of two different pieces. Everybody okay with this? I should be able to be like, why was this X? Why is this negative X? Why is this less than zero? Why is this less than or equal to zero and greater than infinity? You should be able to understand that. So what similarities and differences do you observe in the piecewise form of G of X and the piecewise function you wrote for Michelle's bike ride? So it kind of looks the same, right? Here you guys said that you had opposite, um, opposite, what is it called? Opposite slopes. And in that new one, you got an opposite slope. Here we have down, up, down, up. They both look like the letter V. These are all similarities that you guys said. So you guys are good. Yeah. Um, so however you want to describe that, that's great. Uh, make sure you take the time to do that. This says the function is sometimes written as a piecewise function and often written as absolute value of X. So, hey, Ms. Johnson, what happens if I put that absolute value of X, right? Oh, look, that's exactly what you get, okay? So um, answer each question below. You guys should be able to do these two questions. What's the domain of the absolute value of X? What's the domain of the absolute value of X? Look here, what's the domain? Looking from left to right, what's the smallest, what's the smallest X graph here? What's the smallest X? Not zero, because look, isn't this, isn't negative five smaller than X? Not one. So looking left, what's the smallest value of X that you have? 
technically not negative 10 because this is going to continue on forever, right? Not negative 10, right? Because continue, it's going to continue on forever. What number is that? Yes, right? So the domain is negative infinity. Good. When is it going to stop? When does it stop? Good. Infinity. Good. Ms. Johnson, why are they parentheses? Because whenever you write infinity, it's always going to be parentheses. Last but not least, the range of absolute value of X, the range. Now you're looking from bottom, what's the lowest to the top? What's the bottom to the lowest to the top? What's the lowest? Zero. Now, is this bracket or parenthesis? Bracket or parenthesis? Be wrong. Who cares? Just be wrong. Be wrong. Who cares? Be wrong. Yeah, it's a bracket. So look, at, if you wrote the wrong thing, is anybody laughing at you? No. No one's laughing at you. Be wrong. It didn't hurt you to be wrong. Right? Okay. To infinity, why, Ms. Johnson? Because it goes on forever. This is a parenthesis because infinity always gets parentheses. So we're pretty much done. This last little bit here, I just want to show you. The minimum is going to be the vertex. Um, you don't need to answer these two. I did want to show you um, this exit ticket. So when you go, we'll go over this later. Um, but here, for this exit ticket, anybody know what this, you, this part you already know how to graph. Absolute value of X, we just graphed it. What does this minus three do? What does this minus three do to my graph? Just guess. Most of you know, because you're going to take something that you already knew and you're going to apply it to this. Yes, it moves it down three times, right? Doesn't that make so much sense? So that's the reason why we want to make sure that we understand this. Um, it says create a table. You can create a table and then they want you to graph it. So that's all you're supposed to do. Um, just know that um, today's lesson, one of the biggest things that you were supposed to do was understand that the absolute value function looks like a V, just like you know that X squared looks like a parabola, right? So you should know that those two match.